Hello and welcome to Bonnet Pro. My name is John Klusnick. I'm the founder of Bonnet Pro. I've been a cleaner since 1985. I still clean weekly. And today we're going to do Bonnet 101. We're going to go over uh, the differences between synthetic and natural fiber bonnets, how to care for your bonnets, when and why to use them, and things not to do also. And later we're going to do a demo between uh, Cymex and a uh, bonnet machine to show you the differences and why you bonnets are so critical in your low moisture carpet care. Here I have a pile of synthetic bonnets. You may or may not have seen some of these in the past. We have some microfiber, uh, we have some older microfiber, an old diamond pad, even the, the Christmas tree uh, microfiber bonnet. And these share a lot of common traits, which are the synthetic pads have a tendency to hold up well, they last long, but the cleaning performance and its ability to remove soil is not as great as a natural fiber bonnet. Now the natural fiber bonnets are mostly cotton. Bonnet Pro was the first one to make a bonnet out of wool and we now also make bonnets that are a cotton and wool blend. And each bonnet has a different feel to it and a different reason why you would use one over the other. But comparing it to the synthetic, the cottons won't last as long. The wool bonnets last quite a while. Uh, but what they do is, it's a comparison, if you would, of a streetcar tire to a race car tire. Um, the synthetic pad will give you long life and average performance. The race car tire will give you a shorter life but very high performance. And when it comes down to cleaning the worst of the worst, the cotton bonnet or the cotton wool uh, blended bonnet is what you want to use under your machine to get the highest level of performance, cleaning performance, as you can get. I frequently get asked, how far do my bonnets go? How, how long do I, do I clean with them before I change them? and there's not a one-size-fits-all answer. You can, you can start an estimate at around 400 feet per side, but if I was in um, a dining room coming out of the, the greasy tile from the kitchen, I might only get 25 or 30 or 40 feet per side, and if I'm in a hallway, I might get eight or 900 feet per side. So if you start at around three or 400 feet, that gives you a good average, so if you're going into a bigger job, you know approximately how many bonnets to take with you and then maybe you add 50 percent more just to make sure you have enough uh, to get through that job in case it's dirtier than you thought it was going to be. Now this pad is fairly soiled. I've seen pads dirtier than this and once you get to about this soil level uh, you should flip it because you get to a point of diminishing returns where the pads getting dirtier but the carpets not necessarily getting that much cleaner. So if you've if you've uh, stopped your machine and looked at your pad and it was this dirty or dirtier, you might want to backtrack a few feet, go over it with a, with a clean pad. Uh, that way you're, you're pulling out as much soil as possible uh, to not only make the carpet appearance even, but to remove uh, more soil so your end cap can work more efficiently because it's not overwhelmed with too high of a soil load. Now, some of the, the OP manufacturers are, are starting to go with a bristle brush instead of the Velcro, and that's, that's a good choice. That's a good thing to have. Uh, the, the bonnets will peel off of these much easier, uh, especially with a natural fiber. They grip really well. I like uh, a little bit longer bristle. It gives you a little bit of flex, but either one is fine and is, is your best choice right now for securing your bonnet under your machine, whether it's a rotary or an OP machine. Another part of uh, your bonnet cleaning is caring for your bonnets. What I've found is it's best to clean your bonnets the same day that you soil them. While they're still damp, don't let them sit in the garage and, and get funky for a week where the bacteria starts to grow and they start to get an odor and, and the soil crusts into the bonnet. Clean them the same day you use them. You can use something like bonnet wash. Um, I've designed this with uh, brighteners, enzymes. It's a triple strength. Uh, laundry detergent and what you'll find with this compared to a commercial uh, product is this will clean uh, better and your bonnets will look better. It's important to care for them right from the beginning so when you take your your uh, soiled bonnets that have been used and cleaned and you take those into your customers locations that they smell good and they look clean and that they're not dark and dingy so you can be proud of what you're doing. Now depending on the bonnet you use different bonnets will perform differently and they will also generate different amounts of heat. Heat is what can damage your carpet, so it's important that you spray down enough of your cleaner and keep your machine moving because uh, friction from the bonnet under the machine and the weight of the machine will build up heat and if used improperly you can damage the carpet. Uh, products like the wool piece, 
the wool dissipates heat and they run very cool and they're very um, easy to run on the machine. They, they run like a, a synthetic pad. They will not remove as much soil as the cotton will, uh, but if you have a delicate carpet or you have a wool carpet, this limited use pad would be the right choice uh, for that application. Next you can go to, uh, this is a wool cotton blend, and this will also run cool and very smooth under your machine, and this will remove more soil than this because of the cotton. It's not as much as a, as a full uh, cotton bonnet as far as its cleaning performance. It's somewhere in between, and again, this is very safe for the carpet and will remove a lot of soil because the wool and the cotton are very absorbent. We have the plush, which is a double layer pad. This will hold uh, over four pounds of liquid. It absorbs a, a great deal of moisture, and that's important because your soil's inside of your uh, water molecule uh, where the chemical is suspended, and that's what helps it to move from point A to point B. So one of the things when you're cleaning is you want to have enough moisture down to allow that transfer to take place. If you go and you need more performance, we have the Supima, which is the world's strongest cotton. Here's some Supima yarn. Um, and I've tried before, and I, I can't break this. We'll see if we can do that today. Uh, I usually give up before the cotton does. Why don't you zoom in on my hand there, Jay? That is a strong, strong fiber. So Sapimas currently are the best cotton bonnet uh, produced because it's the strongest cotton you can buy. It's better than Egyptian cotton. It's actually made for fine apparel. Next we have the Pro Cotton Blend. It's at a, a slightly less uh, of a price point and we have these glide strips in here and what that does is it allows it to uh, run under the machine a little smoother and easier than the full cotton does, uh, retaining much of the performance but it also allows, if you have a, a longer day, uh, it's less labor intensive on the operator. This also allows, if, if your chemical foams, it allows the foaming indicators to activate uh, so you can see if you have enough uh, cleaner on the carpet. We look for like a light milk mustache. Um, to, to, we use that as an indicator. Uh, the full cotton, again, this, this will give you the maximum absorption. It doesn't allow the foaming indicators to work as much and uh, it will be a little harder to run under the machine, but as far as performance, this is king of the hill um, right now. So when we're looking at, at um, cleaning, one of the reasons we need to use the pad and why it's so important is we're cleaning a fiber that's about this size. Now imagine the coating of polymer on top of that fiber, which we did here, uh, we got here with an electron microscope, this is a trilobial shaped piece of nylon at 650 times magnification, so you can see the trilobial shape. So you can just try to imagine uh, how thin the coating of uh, end cap polymer is on that. And that's why it's so important to not just flush everything to the bottom of the carpet, that we want to absorb it out with the bonnet. Uh, we want to pre-vacuum, we want to absorb out with the bonnet, and then the smaller amounts of particles that are left behind, we have a much better chance of encapping them and not having any wicking action occur. We took these pictures uh, in a certified lab with an electron microscope and we were able to again get uh, pictures that help you understand and help us see just how small uh, the polymer is on that and just how critical it is to be able to pull soil out when you're cleaning. Now if we look, your pre-vacuuming is going to help greatly with that but also if we look at, if you're doing a commercial job, say monthly, so you're going to clean that 12 times a year, you can either flush the soil to the bottom of the carpet 12 times a year, or every time you take out your bonnets from that job and you wash it, you can see just how much soil you're removing before the end cap takes over. So again, this is very important. You could do dozens of bonnet cleanings uh, every year, and all that water, those dozens or hundreds of gallons of dirty water you removed is no longer in the customer's carpet. It's kind of like if you went to the doctor and you had a sickness, say you had cancer, and the doctor said, well, I'm going to be able to help your brain cancer. I'm going to move it from your brain to your feet. Would that be acceptable? No, you still have cancer. And when you take a machine that, that uh, gravity feeds and washes and cleans a face fiber but flushes it all to the bottom of the carpet, that's not acceptable either in your customer's eyes because you haven't cleaned the carpet, you just moved it 
from the top to the bottom. So the bonnets will help you absorb and pull out your soiling, which makes the carpet cleaner and makes it last longer. So with that said, there's some things you kind of don't want to do when you're bonnet cleaning. Uh, the, the bucket and ring method has been around for a while and it's better than nothing but it's not your best choice and using a, a shower feed through your bonnet is, or a Cymex is also not your best choice and this is why. When you are uh, cleaning something, wet is attracted to dry. So if you're shower feeding through your bonnet and you have a soaked bonnet, all that moisture is being attracted to the dry carpet. So you're going uh, south or, or in a down direction. But we want the soil to come up and out in a north direction and they, they run into each other. So it's not very efficient. Whereas it's much better if you're able to spray either via the machine or some type of uh, uh, pump up sprayer or electric sprayer that to spray the carpet and then go over it with a dryer bonnet then everything's moving in the right direction. The, the moist carpet is attracted to the dry bonnet and the soil is going in the same direction from the carpet into the dry bonnet. So that's a much more effective and efficient way to clean your carpets. It also gives you a much more even uh, drying and soil removal uh, balance compared to a, a, a bucket method or if you use a shower feed that's going to be a lot wetter and take a lot longer to dry and it's not going to remove as much soil. We're going to put a new bag on our pro team. Obviously this is the carpet that sat in the machine shop for the last couple of months so it's nice and dirty. So uh, part of your low moisture is you do want to pre-vacuum because that's going to remove a bunch of soil that your chemical isn't going to have to deal with. So in other words, uh, less soil, uh, the chemical can go deeper and further into the carpet. So pre-vacuuming is very important. Now, not that any of you would have cleaned that without vacuuming it, but let's just show you what we got out of there. Just from that little bit of carpet. So can you imagine if you were cleaning 10 or 15 or 20,000 feet of carpet, how much soil would be left behind, and then you're expecting your polymer from your end cap to take care of all that. It doesn't work that way. So this is a crucial step, a critical step in laying your foundation for getting a great result from your low moisture and your end cap methods. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take my new Omega. We're going to mix it at three ounces per gallon and each machine is going to get filled from the same tank. So there's four, there's four gallons in, in the tank, so that would be 12 ounces. You would give me the. This is uh, John 
This is his uh, from Burdick's Carpet Cleaning. He's a customer and a friend and neighbor of, of mine, and he, it's his Cymex, and we're gonna, he's gonna run the Cymex for me today. All right, we'll go to the next one. All right. And then we'll fill up a big Cymex. Now the Cymex, not to pick on it because it's a well-made machine, there's a lot of people that like it, but what that basically does is it'll clean the face fiber, but it won't clean the carpet. And what I mean by that is it's going to rearrange the soil. It's going to wash it from the top and the face fiber of the carpet down to the backing of the carpet. So it's going to shower feed through these fiber pads. Um, we make bonnets for it, but compared to a full-size rotary, uh, these just aren't as efficient because how many pad changes you need to go through. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to cut this carpet into three sections. I'm going to flip this over for just a minute. And what we'll do is after um, we clean, we're going to do a little absorption test to see what's left behind, how much moisture is left behind and even how much soil is left behind. So if we want, we can even make this fairer. I'm going to give the dirtier section to the Minimax, and we'll put the cleaner section with the Cymex. How's that? All right, Mr. John, if you want to do your thing. Do, we need, do I need to turn that valve on for you? Yeah, let's put the valve on. I'll get the cord for you. Why don't you go from front to back? Anything coming out? Yeah. Seems like it's a little dry. It's getting there. Oh, there you go. It takes a moment. Doesn't seem like that's coming out too good. Open that up. Now try. It's getting kinked. Yeah. Let me see. Let me go over one spot here just a little bit more. You know, it's funny, when I, when I let go of the handle, I expect it to turn off because I'm used to the rotor. <laughs> All right. Now what we're going to do is real simple. We're going to take a couple paper towels. Would you figure that's about as clean as you'd make it if you were doing a customer job? Pretty much, yep. Okay. We'd be right at it. All right. We'll just lay this one here. Now this is a 82 pound piece of metal. And we'll just give this a couple rolls. And the whole point of this is just to absorb out a little bit of the moisture and the soil that might be left behind. 
uh, to compare that soil amount and that moisture amount with what the bonnet will do for us. So this is reasonably wet. Um, you can see my hand. And you can see there's definitely dirt on the towel. And you can see dirt on the paper towel also. We'll throw a subpoena down. Now one of the things you want to do when you're using a bonnet is you want to just lubricate under the bonnet a little bit. That's all right. That way we're less likely to cause any fiber damage or have a problem. Now I did mix this light, uh, something like this, I probably should have mixed it at four ounces per gallon, I mixed it less. Um, now if we look at what's on here, that's dirty. Ooh, yeah. So all that would have been left in the carpet. So we're going to turn that over again, take a little bit more out. And we might even need to go to a second bonnet uh, because of the amount of soil that was left in here. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I used up my chemical. <laughs> We're going to need some more juice. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. That's what I get for being a gentleman and taking the dirtier section. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what I'm also going to do is, is flip pads because I'm going to imagine we're heavily soiled again because there's just yeah, so much in there. That's incredible. All right, so again, I'm sure we have another dirty pad. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down our paper towel. And you saw that I went over that, and I sprayed that quite a bit. And we'll get another. So we'll give that a roll. Now you can see that the paper towel is blotchy. Even though I went over that multiple times and, and sprayed quite a bit, the paper towel is only blotchy. And there is, if you look at where the paper towel was inside, that had actually bled through the paper towel onto the towel. This is much cleaner, and nothing drips out of this. So your carpet's going to dry faster, and there's a greater soil uh, removal in the process.
Again, you want to spray first to lubricate and protect. Helps the cleaning process. Thank you, John. And that just cuts through it real easy, adding that brush in there. All right, this has some real bad grease, uh, petroleum-based spots on here, so we're gonna just pre-treat that, and just for the sake of it, we're gonna go over it again with the fourth side and uh, see how much more we can pull out of this, out of this uh, carpet with these pads, just to make the point that of how much soil can be hidden in the carpet and why it's so important to pull it out as you're cleaning. Now you can see that's getting lighter, which is good, because we started out, we started out heavily soiled, we got a little lighter, we got a little lighter, and now we're getting to be a light brown. And that gets to be the point where um, you can decide to do one more pass, or you can let it go, the end cap will take over. But if the carpets um, are putting this much soil on, on your bonnets, you definitely want to switch them out more or make another pass with a fresh bonnet. The bonnet is a, is a great tool for you guys to use in association with your end cap cleaning to remove as much soil as possible. The uh, cylindrical brush or shower feeding through a bonnet or through a fiber pad just won't yield you as much fruit, as much clean carpet as uh, removing the soil with the bonnets will. All right, hey John, thanks for coming by. Thanks thank for letting me use your Simex there. Absolutely, thank you. So to recap, you can just see how important it is to, to do a good vacuuming job. It's just critical. And then to pull out soil, even with all that vacuumed out, we still pulled out a lot of soil on four sides of a bonnet. Typically they should cover three or four hundred feet a side, and this is just uh, maybe ten or eleven square feet. And we, we totally wrecked the bonnet soil-wise with how much we pulled out of this. Um, so it's, it's again, it's, I can't stress how important it is to be able to pull out the soil when you're doing your low moisture cleaning. Uh, and that helps uh, lay a good foundation so the next time you come in and clean, it's not building up. It's, you want it to diminish. Uh, you want it to reduce, not, not always be added. Well, I wanted to thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. And if you have any questions, feel free to call me at uh, Bonnet Pro or go to www.bonnetpro.com um, to find out more about our products and what we do and how we can serve you. Thanks again. Bye-bye.
the four, excuse me, <laughs> uh, the four is to get the Cymex section to look as good as it is took twice the amount of time that it did with the Minimax. Well, I don't think the Cymex was, when I used it the other day, it wasn't putting out like it was. Typically that'll, you can easily flood the carpet if you choose to. Just and, holding that handle. That on. just wasn't doing it. So there's, there's an issue with the valve on that of how much is actually coming out of the, out of the Cymex. Because when I, when I ran it over here yesterday, it was just flooding. I mean, I, I was getting mounds of foam. Yeah. So like, hold on a second.